Hello and welcome to part 3 of my RenPy for Beginners tutorial. If you haven't seen parts 1 and 2, be sure to check those out first just to make sure we're on the same page. Uh, if you need it, I'll post a link to those at the top of the screen right now so you can go check those out and then come back for part 3. So today we're going to talk about how to do player choices by using a menu screen. And this is really, really easy, and it's also um, a cool way to drive player engagement. One of the cool things about visual novels is that you can have the player actually decide the flow of the game or decide certain things that happen in game, and we're going to do that with menu. So as you can see, in our, I'm in our script.rpy right now, and I've cleaned it up a little bit. I've taken away the dialogue as well as some of the comments that we probably don't need right now. So right now, this is our entire game. We're going to, uh, once we hit the start button, we'll go to label start, then it will show the bar, and then the game ends. And that's all that happens right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, display our Eileen character. So we're going to say show Eileen casual neutral with dissolve. And we're going to have her ask our character, which he's going to be played by the player of the game, she's going to ask him what his name is. What's your name? Now um, our player is going to have a decision, so we're going to create a menu screen by going to menu colon. So as I said in one of my previous videos, indentions are important. So that uh, they exist to set coding blocks apart. So when we create a menu, uh, when we put that colon there, it's going to create a new uh, indention or a new coding block. So when I hit enter, it will automatically tab over and create an indention for us, so we don't even really have to do that. And we're going to put in our first menu option, and we're going to do that in quotation marks. So we're going to create a quote, and we're going to say, my name is Steven, end quote. And then we're going to do another uh, colon. And notice it tabs over again. We're creating another coding block. And this one is where we determine what happens after you choose that menu option. So here, we're going to have Steven um, actually not take that back because we already spoke. So now we're going to have Eileen speak. Oh. There we go. So if we hit enter, then we're still in that same coding block, but that's all we really want there. So instead, we're going to backspace and we're going to create our second menu option. There we go, so my name is David, and then another colon, and then notice it automatically tabs over again when we hit the enter key to go to the next line. So we're going to have her speak again. She says, I'm sorry, I thought you were Stephen. There we go. And then, um, so that's all for our menu, just those two options for right now. So when we go to the next line, we're going to backspace until we're even with our menu. So now we're back in the label start indentation. We're just going to keep on going. Um, so then we're going to have Stephen talk. There we go. And I just realized that we forgot to put Steven in our scene, so I'm going to do that right after she speaks. There we go. So we're going to show him, oops, at the left with move in left, which is one of our transitions that we used in part two of our series. So the way this is going to play through, we're going to begin at label start, it's going to show the bar, then Eileen is going to dissolve into the center of the screen, because that's the default. She's going to say, what's your name? Then Steven is going to pop in from the left, and he's going to stay at the left side of the screen. Then we're going to get a menu. You can either say, my name is Steven, Eileen will say, that's what I thought, then it's going to skip all the way down after the menu to Steven saying, what's your name? And Eileen says, my name is Eileen. 
Or you can say, my name is David. She says, I'm sorry, I thought you were Steven. And then it still skips past the menu there. So let's control S to save and let's run that and see if everything happens as we planned. All right, so we go to start. Eileen appears, what's your name? Let's say my name is Steven. That's what I thought. What's your name? My name is Eileen. Game ends. Let's choose our other option this time. My name is David. I'm sorry, I thought you were Steven. And then continues until it ends. All right, perfect, just as we planned. So uh, one other thing that we can do is sometimes if you have um, a, a branching pathway in your game, you might want to jump to an entirely different section of the game. So let's try that. I'm going to go ahead and add another menu option, and we're going to call this say nothing. Now instead of dialog, we're going to say jump to say underscore nothing and then we're going to create another label just like label start so it's going to be all the way at the left and we're going to call this label say underscore nothing and then a colon and then notice it automatically indents for us just like the just like the label is up there all right so um, I used an underscore here I'm not a hundred percent sure that you need to but that's a good practice to get into you shouldn't use um, spaces uh, unless you're separating them from uh, keywords so for instance label is a keyword space say nothing is the name of the label so I used an underscore instead of a space like I said I'm not a hundred percent sure that's necessary but it can cause some strange behavior if you don't do that so I recommend doing that whenever you can all right, so now uh, if you choose say nothing, it jumps to say nothing. And we'll have Eileen say, I must be going. And then we'll hit return, which will end the game for us. All right, so let's try that. Let's try that with our third option. So I did control S to save, launch project. And here we go, we go to start. So now notice we have three options. We'll choose say nothing. There we go, and then it jumps to that label. She says her line, and then the game still ends. So uh, depending on the game, you, can, uh, you might wanna use the labels or just put a couple of lines of code up under each option. This generally keeps things cleaner, but again, if you're using a branching pathway, you might wanna use the label if you jump to an entirely different part of the game. Um, if I were actually using this in my game, I'd probably leave this part up there. I just wanted to do that for illustrative purposes just to show you how labels work. All right, that will about do us for this one. Be sure to hit the like button if you got something out of this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I've got lots more of these videos planned. And if you wanna know different ways that you can support me either for free or monetarily, check the description below and I'll uh, let you know what you can do uh, to help me out with that and help grow my channel. And leave me a comment if you um, have any questions or comments, just uh, put them down in the comment section below. And that'll do it. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.